2414 is a podcast about finding hope and common ground through casual conversation. Like the friends on the road in the New Testament, in Luke chapter 24, verse 14, we want to walk away with more understanding that leads to more conversation as the journey continues. Thanks for walking with us. Well, hello. My name is Shane Welter. Hi, Shane. Hi, Pastor Dan. This is Pastor Dan. Today, we are joined by Terry Johnson. Hello. Hey, Terry. Hi. And Ray Johnson. Hi. No relation. <laughs> no relation. No, wait. They're married. How yeah. long have you guys been married? But I really, I don't know. I have any idea. Uh, we should ask Terry, apparently. Oh, do you guys have any? <laughs> <laughs> Ballpark. 41 years. 41 years. Wow. Congrats. Shane's been married for 41 weeks. I just made it past a year. Okay. All right. 53 oh. weeks. Yep. I'm catching up. <laughs> yeah. what? We had, you get to 41, we won't be here. <laughs> we had 17 years last weekend, and neither of us got a card or a gift or anything. I was like, is that today? All right, well. Hi. Wh- yeah, <laughs> what's on the calendar? <laughs> like, hey, are you going to get the mail? Who's going to do these dishes? Happy anniversary. It's not one of the significant numbers. 17. Yeah. It's so. prime. That's it's a... That's not what we're talking about today, Shane. What are we talking about today? <laughs> today, we're talking about retirement. I Shane's think, looking ahead. Shane's looking ahead. I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're, He's got it circled <laughs> on his calendar. We're talking about retirement today uh, as a kind of like major life transition, things ahead. Yeah. yeah a, lot, a lot of people get to retire, and I am not retiring anytime soon. Uh yeah. Terry, I, we're, I don't have a date for you, but hopefully not anytime soon. Although we'll <laughs> let you guys talk about that deadline. But it's something that a lot of people go through and with probably a variety of degrees of success. I think some people handle it really, really well. And some people it's really, really hard. And we're curious, Ray, what that's been like for you. And, and Terry, what that's been like for you as kind of bystander slash witness slash, I don't know. I was going to say victim, but somebody has been caught up in that. <laughs> but before we jump into that life transition to graduation, we like to share lows and highs, things that have been hard, things that are going well. Mm-hmm. And then uh, an interesting, well, maybe it's not interesting at all, but I'm interested in our follow-up question is, what was your first job? Not necessarily career job, but not like I got chores at home, like your first W-2 or W-9 or when, when you had an employer who took out taxes, what was your <laughs> first job and what was that like? So Shane, uh, lows, highs, what was your first real paying gig? Real paying gig. Okay. All right. So highs, uh, I'll start off because easy. I just got back from vacation two days ago, a day ago, yesterday. I don't know, two days ago. Yeah. Lauren and I were in Florida celebrating our anniversary, spending Ooh. time with our parents on the beach. It got above 60 degrees. Hey. <laughs> oh, that was nice. Got sun, the real sun, <laughs> not this. We had 60 cloudy. for a couple hours this week. <laughs> Today, it's like, it's sunny, but it's not even warm. <laughs> Nonetheless, it's annoying. But uh, Florida was awesome. Uh, got to see my parents' new house. Um, Got to see family, where they live. It's really cool where they live. The Blue Angels. You know the Blue Angels? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Motorcycle they, gang, right? <laughs> sure. Yeah. The Blue Angels, they they did they practiced over my parents' house. Oh, so on the last day we Lauren and I were there. We were out there with my mom and got to see him. One of them, well, they fly so low, it's like your body and your ears pop. Or like it's so loud. It's so cool though. Lauren and I got a cool picture of like us dancing as they're in formation behind us. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really cool what place. A dork. <laughs> I know. That's and my awesome. parents have a pool on the backyard. Oh, it's so nice. When it's like real hot, not like this, Washington. But when it's like really hot, pool feels so nice. It's really nice. Uh, so that was definitely a high. Very rejuvenating. Very relaxing. Uh, lows, July. Just not looking I don't know. Mixed feelings about July because we've got the uh, the youth gathering in Houston. We're planning for. That's that, your low. Huh? Your preemptive low is. <laughs> no, it's not. That's why. This it's, thing I've been working on for three years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this guy who helps direct it. What a jerk. No. Uh, <laughs> it's no. It. I, I'm looking forward to it, but it's just the planning of of it. Because after that, then uh, also working on a, the 
trip, a mission trip to Alaska. So those are the big things. And it's just, I don't know. It's just the planning of it. That's, that's kind of a little taxing, stressful a little, but we're looking forward to it. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. And I'll live and it'll be great memories. <laughs> it's going to be great. It'll be great. I don't know what I'm saying, but, uh, first job, first job, first what, you do? job. I always love bragging about this. It was detasseling. You guys are from yeah. Illinois. Yeah. You, I know what that is. Oh yeah. First should be everyone's first job. You, you just walk down miles of cornfields pulling the, they're called tassels, but the very tops of corn okay. stalks off. So they, it has to do with seeding, like seeding corn. So it doesn't reproduce one way and not the other. It's weird. Okay. There's male and female corn. If you didn't know this fun fact of the day and you do that for, like nine hours every day of the week. Do you throw them on the ground? Do you have a bag? You, know, you, just, what you, know, you just throw them on the ground. You pull, you just literally walk in the fields like, <laughs> you're just doing that. Sometimes they have machines you can ride on that just literally just like walk. And they're grabbing like, individual heads or ears of corn. It's not the corn, but like the top of the stalk. So when if you imagine a corn stalk growing all the way and okay. then it has these like, it's like wheat. It almost looks like wheat. Okay. And it's like the seed pollinator parts of it so that's what you're pulling out we're gonna get so many angry comments and emails about everything you're getting wrong (laughs) probably all our dedicated seed farmer so (laughs) to our nebraska and iowa contingency sorry thanks for listening anyway yeah or maybe we got it right and this is a great shout out to our our corn growing states yes let's hope (laughs) yeah so So you detasseled detasseled now was that a a real job or was that a farmer like paying you cash under the table that doesn't seem like something you'd fill out like an actual employee I had to fill out like a mildewy contract thing and they put some information on it. They took taxes out and everything. And at the end of the summer, you get one, you get a paycheck and just one lump sum for the whole summer. Yeah. And it was like, I mean, it was so minimum wage, but you're a kid at every, every, all, any money is good. I think when I started, I could be wrong, but it was like five. 25 or something yeah and then it was like the minimum wage at wisconsin raised and it was like 725 for a while i can't imagine as a young person working that long without like the payout like i needed a paycheck every other week otherwise like i'm not going back on monday i was 14 <laughs> that's what i was thinking too that's a long time <laughs> a to long wait for time. a paycheck for, <laughs> for a hard job oh yeah i was 14 and okay. detasseling detasseling i didn't I love know that it. Built my triceps up. It was good. <laughs> well, we've, we've noticed, Shane. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad you've it's noticed. It's not lost on us. What, di- what direction? We'll go to Terry. Terry. Terry Johnson, lows, highs. Well, I Today, was just thinking hour. of this actually this morning. Um, I'm kind of relieved, even though I love doing it, that all the things around here are done for the summer. It's kind of a nice break. You know, the um, we have BSF and we have... Um, homeschools and we have Boy Scouts and so facility just, rentals yeah, here it's at St. Nice Luke's. It's nice to have a little bit of a break and I love it when it's happening but it's just nice to have that little bit of break for summer and kind of refresh and yeah. sign new facility agreements and move on. I was just thinking of that this morning. Um, so that that's kind of a high. My, my low is I thought my son and daughter-in-law and baby were moving here from Phoenix, and they've decided not to. Um, they're going to stay in Phoenix, which is fine. Um, but I'm, I might have to go down there this summer when it's 125 degrees. Oh. <laughs> they keep hearing Shane talk about how cold it is up here, and yeah. they're like, well, if that's the case. <laughs> so they're hopefully going to visit in August, but um, that was a little disappointing. Mm-hmm. My first job was... Thankfully, not detasseling, because that's what all of my friends did in (laughs) Illinois. But my parents and my aunt and uncle and my grandma bought a country club, very low key, (laughs) out in the out outside of town that had a nine hole golf course and a pool. And we were members of this course and swam in that pool since I can walk. And then it was for sale probably when I started I was 12 and we begged our parents to buy it and they said, we're not going to buy Lakeview. And then when I was 15, they sat us all down, my cousins, all my family and said, we just bought Lakeview and we thought it was a big joke, but they did. They literally just bought bought the country club. (laughs) Yeah. Did did they then transition out of whatever they're doing for employment and that became their job? Only my, um, only my aunt. So my uncle worked at GE electric Mm -hmm. and he still worked there. 
my aunt was a nurse and she just, she still filled in, but she wasn't a nurse anymore. My mom um, had started to be a car salesperson and so started that. And my dad was um, manufacturing engineering. So hmm. he, they did not stop working. And my grandma was a farmer and grandpa had already oh. passed away, but um, we had lots of friends help us. And so our job, especially in the summers, my aunt owned us and we got a hundred dollars cash a week. She gave us a hundred dollar bill every week, but she owned wow. us. We were there all day long, seven days a week. No lunch Kitchen, breaks. Kitchen, lifeguard, mowing, <laughs> mowing fairways, cleaning bathrooms, um, tending bar as I got to be 16. Um, we did it all. And it was, when you look back, it's fun. When you were in the middle of it at 15, it was not fun. Yeah. Um, did you have a favorite task? I liked to tend bar when I got 16 because uh, we already knew everybody there because we've been members for years. Um, but I, I like tending bar and listening to the, all the conversations. That was my favorite. My sister's favorite was mowing with the helmet on, you know, the helmet on so she get hit by the golf balls. I, was, I didn't I, like I the was mowing. A helmet. I, I, yeah, golf course, I guess. Yeah, she had to wear a helmet. It's like, you're doing it wrong. I think if you need a helmet for mowing the lawn. Yeah. Did you f do like the full bar service? Like mm -hmm. you knew how to make mm -hmm. th all the cocktails? Yeah, because we had weddings and, and <sighs> bowling banquets. And um, yeah, yeah, I knew how to do all that stuff. Did you have a favorite drink? Yeah, just get a beer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy to open. And that's when the pull tabs, you know, the actual, they came off. Oh. And you'd find them all over the golf course and step on them. And yeah. So, but that, my fa and I, I liked lifeguarding though, too. We had a, oh, yeah. I, and when we bought it, it was nine holes and that summer or fall, actually, we put in another nine. So it became an 18 hole golf course course. So wow. I can remember at 15 walking behind a trailer that my dad and my uncle were driving and we were just picking up rocks and luckily it wasn't as rocky as it is here, oh, yeah. but just picking up rocks and throwing all six of us or five of us, uh, d throwing rocks in the back of a trailer all on this old farmland. Wow. Yeah. So it was pretty cool. We were semi-private. Cool. So some nights the public couldn't come in and golf because we had ladies night, men's night, but mm. other nights, other people could, but we were busy. Mm. That's a awesome. Hop in place. Sounds like a fun first job. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, Terry. Mm -hmm. Ray, what about you? Lows, highs from the day, uh, the week, the hour? I think my low right now would be I've, I'm doing some... Uh, lawn irrigation work and i'm battling a little leak and mm -hmm. uh at, at home yes okay. and it's taxing my <laughs> it's taxing me and my patient you know because so is it bubbling up somewhere to like a mushy nope, spot no nope, it's it's just some connections that you want to put a valve in a shutoff valve mm -hmm. and it should be extremely simple i mean it's <laughs> straightforward and you know it's it's the typical leak you're just chasing it from joint to joint you know and so you, you just put it away you say stop <laughs> stop <laughs> and then you come back the next day you know and you think okay i've got a really good idea we're going to start here and go this way and it just uh, stop <laughs> so <laughs> so i've been chasing this leak for a couple days and yeah. like i said it, it i really thought that the way that i had it set up it was going to be Half hour. I'm into this thing for a half an hour. No, nope, no. Nope. I got two days of mud and water all over the place. And, oh. But, you know, so. Um, and that's my low. So yeah. the high is, um, you know, it looks like the weather is turning, uh, which is good. I really like that. Um, mm -hmm. Since I did spend some time down in the warm weather for a while. But uh, weather's changing. Um, playing golf tonight. I think Terry's going to come over and have dinner with us at the club. It's a little, it's a, I don't, I did not use the word men's. It's a little <laughs> group thing because Alyssa and some of her girlfriends play in it. So, oh, yeah. uh, but it's a nice little uh, Thursday night golf thing that we get together and, and just kind of, you know, a bunch, bunch of people getting together and playing golf. Is that like a regular thing is every Thursday? It or? started last year okay. um, and we just got it started um, again this last Thursday. But now with the good weather, and it's a, uh, it's just a chance to get together with a bunch of people that you see around. So that's my, awesome. that's kind of my high is that the weather's going to be good. Um, uh, a couple of uh, people that uh, I play golf with a little bit um, have retired in the last year, and so 
now we're starting to get together in the these times to play golf where normally we wouldn't have done it, you know, a few years ago. Yeah. So, uh, first job I had job. was, um, I had a friend of my dad's that he grew up with, uh, since they were little, little kids, um, and only lived kitty corner from each other. Um, and he had an, a pizza place that he, it was a family pizza place. And, uh, and I've known these people and, you know, all my life. And his wife called me one day and my mom answered the phone. Like when there was a real phone and you had to yeah. like go and answer. Mm-hmm. And she says, Hey, was what are you doing? Was this the two piece with the one of the ear and the mouth and the wall or, and you, or and one? You, no, it wasn't quite that. Okay. <laughs> um, but she says, what are you doing? It was a Friday night. And I says, what are you doing? I said, well, really nothing. Just, do you want to, do you want to come down to the pizza place and work? I was literally 13 years old. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably not legal. <laughs> it probably was not. Uh, but uh, I think being friends and all that kind of stuff and the fact that it was 100 years ago, you know, practically, <laughs> yeah. you know, you probably could get away with it. But I, I, I guess one of the dishwashers didn't show up. Nice. Mm. And so, um, so I went down and the back room was a mess. They definitely needed a dishwasher. So I started working there. It was one of those, you know, Friday night, home basketball game nights was just crazy going on you know so i just started washing dishes at probably like i said 13 and um what terry probably about i would say seven or eight years later (laughs) um we moved out here and i stopped working there so i worked there from the time i was that and i had to take a little break at one point in time where they did kind of enforce the uh, 16 year old rule but uh sure. but but my birthday's february 1st it was only 31 days and then i was then i was back into it so but that was my that was my first job it was a great job um yeah. uh working for friends you know but still you know still working you know and learning kind of learning what work is and how people you know really want you to be there when you when you say that you're going to be someplace turns out so kind of took that in so so that was my first job it was a fun job that's cool i i um uh, i've never quit a job and stayed local i've you said you like you worked there until you moved yeah every job i've ever had i've worked at until i've moved mm-hmm. um hmm. anyway it's just a yeah it's like same thing with moving i've i've never moved locally my my grandparents have moved twenty times within the St. Louis area. Never for work; they just get bored. <laughs> um, so I've never quit a job and stayed in town, and I've never moved in town. Mm. So, wow, yeah, uh, lows highs for me. Yeah, um, man, I I feel too cloudy and sounds cliche, busy to even parcel through what most of them are right now. I guess. One kind of low and high is schools out for the kids. So that, that's kind of a mixed bag of I'm happy for them. I remember what that was like, but also they're always home now um, and they're bored and they don't always get along the three of them and they don't necessarily care if someone else is talking or doing something. They uh, And they probably got all of this from me, by the way, of, you know, starting a conversation as I turn the corner into a room. (laughs) Who cares what anyone in that room might be doing? I'm here and I'm talking. So um, I'll even stop my kids sometime. I'll say, now, now, who are you talking to? And they'll stop and they go, well, I guess everybody. (laughs) And so then, all right, everyone, please stop what you're doing. This little person has an announcement that requires all of our attention. So that's, you know, that's, that's fun. Uh, so that's, yeah, that's, that's a low and a high. Another high is I'm doing a trail running series up in Seattle. So every other Tuesday there's a a run. So we're at Ravenna park a few weeks ago. And then a couple nights ago, I was at the Redmond watershed, which is a cool little park, except for all the mosquitoes. Mm -hmm. Uh, we don't have mosquitoes down here. I I don't know. At least in my neighborhood, I don't have hardly any mosquitoes, but both times I've gone to this park, I'm I'm just getting bit up constantly. So high running in the park with friends, low mosquitoes are, it's hard to see how they were part of a good creation. (laughs) I I don't know if they came after the fall or if, if somehow God had a good purpose for them before the fall, but man, just no, I don't miss them. They were in Illinois. Horrible, <laughs> literal bloodsuckers. They're terrible. 
Uh, my first job, I worked at a Jewish deli in St. Louis. Uh, my big brother had worked there before me. So in St. Louis, when I was growing up, you if you were under 16, you had to get a worker's permit. Your school had to sign off that you could keep up with work. So when I was 15 and a half or 15, I got my school to sign off on a worker's permit. I walked in and I said, hey, my big brother used to work here. Can I get a job? And who's your brother? Mike Weber. You're Weber's little brother? All right, little Weber, when can you start? <laughs> so I was kind of little Weber for a while until I, I shed the little and it was just Weber. Washing dishes at first. I remember putting on apron and going home just soaked. <laughs> Navigating what bowls and cups can you spray mm -hmm. with what angles and... <laughs> It's, yep. There's no way to teach. Uh, Mark Twain has some quote about, you know, anybody who's pulled the tail of a bull knows a few things more than somebody who hasn't. And there's just like. That is funny. <laughs> you, you, you learn, uh, we call them monkey bowls, the little bowls. And it's just, mm. those are, again, a sign of the fallen creation. You spray those and it's just, it comes right back at you with the same force. <laughs> and you're like, all right, uh, note to self, these guys are horrible. So if, did you ever have to wash ramekins? Is that I don't know what that is. It's like the the tiny metal things where ketchup is put in. Oh no, we, we didn't. We, we did didn't you have a machine this. or was it all hand? We, we had a Hobart, a standard Hobart machine, okay. but mostly a lot by hand. Okay, because these ramekins, sometimes like these light dishes, sometimes you put them in, and then the like the machine comes out empty. You're like, oh, it, everything fell out just <laughs> on the inside. <laughs> you, you gotta. Remember, I remember crawling. the trap that all the gunk yep. fed in. Oh. It, it wouldn't drain, and you just scrape and slime oh. out of there. We didn't have a dishwasher at Lakeview. We did hand your dishes oh. all by ourselves. All get the, the garden hose out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it come out your hands. You'd almost be blistered from touching oh. these hot dishes. Or, um, so I I washed dishes for first six months. Then I was a short order cook and kind of ran the cook line till I moved away um, to Virginia. We also had a, a bagel bakery, and so I had cleaning giant industrial bakery things. Mm. Uh, that was a, a horrible, horrible, <laughs> and a wonderful job. Like, it's yeah, so are. many great memories, <laughs> yeah. so much fun, and gosh, what a terrible place to be. <laughs> <laughs> I remember walking into Malco Hall Kitchen and seeing that dishwasher over there in the corner. That was the same exact thing I had, and I just... All of a sudden, these you know, open the door, slide it in, open the door, let it go, flip the switch, and I just like all these memories of that thing came back. It's pretty visceral. Uh, uh, Ray, I just finished a book I can loan to you. Maybe it's called Dishwasher. It's about a guy who set out to wash dishes professionally in all fifty states. Um, oh wow! And within within the first chapter, I was like, I could smell the smells and feel the feels, oh, and I was there. Uh, uh, so, anywho, yeah, fun, fun. I've had other jobs that, but that was that was the first like official legal job. I, I had weird, you know, the neighborhood jobs and mowing lawn. And there was, at one point, I was dismantling shelves in a warehouse that I'm sure was not legal for this child to be doing these mm -hmm. giant steel shelves. And another weird memory, I don't know how any of these things happened, but I was programming vending machines. Same thing, like my guy, my dad knew a guy <laughs> who was just paying me cash and Snickers under the table. And I was like, by hand programming the prices into some vending machine. It was just a Saturday's worth of work. Yeah. Here's an envelope. I, I don't I don't know. Terry did the same thing to me today. She had me out there putting signs up and all she paid me was Tootsie Rolls off of her candy <laughs> dish. <laughs> oh, Take wow. what you can get. <laughs> I just wait till she's on the phone and can't yell at me and then I steal it. <laughs> good idea. Um, well, look, uh, oh, man. That, that's good. Thanks for sharing. Um, talking about Life Transitions is a little series here. We looked at retirement. Uh, we're looking at retirement. Before we talked about um, that transition of graduation and moving and now retirement, this idea of you have a, a career or maybe multiple careers, and then at some point you are able to or choose to or maybe you're forced to or encouraged to stop working full-time. And it seems like some people... Uh, retire once and it's a dream come true. Other people retire and it's really hard. Other people retire and then they kind of back out of it, maybe full time or part time. Um, that's not a bad thing. I say back out like they failed or something like that. But uh, Terry, you're still working at least part time. Um, and Ray, are you officially, officially retired? Officially, officially uh, July, July 7th. Okay. Uh, 2020. And what, what did you, uh, kind of nuts and bolts, what did you do before July 7th, 2020? So I worked for Boeing uh, 36 years, moved out here from, graduated from school uh, uh, with my engineering degree, moved out here, 
you know, Terry came out a couple weeks later with the baby, a lot of life change things all in a matter of about six weeks, you know? So, but, um, I worked for Boeing in the engineering department. When I, when I left, I was, um, uh, structures engineering on the wing of the three, seven. So you say the wing, did you have like, is it port starboard? Like, do you focus on one side of one wing? No, I had it from tip all the way to the, the wing box, all the way out to the other tip. So, um, and uh, had all the engineering, uh, structures engineering for that. And so I had a number of people that, that worked for me, and a lot of them had worked for me for a while. And and then along came COVID, you know. And, yeah. and uh, I came to the realization that after about, after March 20th, for probably maybe about four to six weeks, I was just not programmed to work from home and, you know, it was, it was a people job yeah, mm-hmm. and not seeing people and, you know, talking to them over the phone and, and just everything that was going on. I just, you know, I just decided that, uh, you know, this, this wasn't what I was set up to do and there was no end in sight for when, yeah when people were going to go back and, and, um, and it's still that way today. I had lunch with some friends, um, from work. Uh, just last week and most are still not back, you know, so I don't know what that would have been like two years of yeah. sitting at the kitchen table. You said 36 mm-hmm. years, 34 years. What'd you say? 36 years. 36. At Boeing. Was it a lot of the same people for a lot of that time? No, no. It, um, well for, for probably I would say the last, um, 18, 20 years. Yeah. It was, it was a lot of the same people in the same group and, and, you know, managers come in and managers leave and people that you work for and then having different jobs, different responsibilities. Um, but, um, yeah, it, it as of, you know, probably I would say on June 6th, the <laughs> dynamics of the, the group had changed. There was a lot of, a lot of, you know, new young Mm. people which is is just really fun and amazing to to be able to do that you know work mm-hmm. with people like that so yeah so i don't want to read a minute mm-hmm. to it but or put words in your mouth but I, I think i heard you say that in in a lot of ways covid maybe accelerated your timeline for w- when that date would happen yeah because i would say that uh, so on march 20th boeing made the decision whoosh, you know go home you know we're from home well probably about march 18th i probably had told my boss no the, well they were offering early retirements at the time. And I said, no, I'm not going to do that. You know, I said, you know, I, st- you know, I really liked my job. I liked being by the airplanes. I liked the people. The only thing I didn't really care for was the commute up to Renton every day and back, yep. you know? So I said, you know, no, 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 I'm, I'm here. I'm here for the duration, you know? Mm-hmm. And then, you know, come Thursday, the 20th or whatever it was, you know, away we went and, and, uh, like I said, it, it did accelerate it. There's no doubt about it. I, um, I would just not, again, I was just not built to try to manage the, your working relationship and relationships with people over the telephone. Yeah. I, I know some people who getting ready for retirement, they have some like countdown, like a little kids getting ready for Christmas, the, the weeks or the months or the change would, if you had, uh, if COVID hadn't happened or you got closer to what you assumed your end date would have been are you the kind of person who would have uh, an app on your phone every time you open it up, it tells you how many days till Christmas or how many days to retirement or. Um, probably not, not until it really got like down to the last couple months, you know, and okay. you make that decision to go. Probably not. I, I, I really had no, no real plan. I, I will tell you a, a little story. I had a friend of mine who, um, uh, she told me she retired. She was probably two or three years older than me and she retired and we had a little get together for another person. <laughs> and she says, are you still working? And I said, yeah. I said, she goes, she said, promise me right now that you will not be there at 62. See, she had already had, she'd already been gone and, and she knew what to look forward to. I said, okay, Renee, I will, I will promise you that, you know? And I said, well, oh. <laughs> well, when they made the, uh, so sitting at home, when they made the offers, I, t- I did take the, uh, the upfront six month 
it took me right to February 1st, which was my birthday That's in 62. Awesome. So, wow. so I, I, I could have said that I, I pretty much fulfilled that, but, uh, yeah, her and I had a long conversation that day about just too many other things to do and don't be there at 62. Uh, that sounds like a loving friend. Mm-hmm. Terry, I'm curious from your perspective. I mean, I, Maybe as our financial person here at church, you, you probably cared about the finances of all this, but I'm more interested in like home dynamics of uh, of who you are, who Ray is, what your house was like. Was that an easy kind of sign off for you or is that, oh, no, like, please keep working? How, how did you yeah, kind of process ladder. through that? <laughs> keep working? <laughs> My first thought was, I'm never going to be home alone again. <laughs> that was my first <laughs> thought because when I'm working, he's at home. When I come home, he's at home. I knew he'd golf and stuff in the summertime, but I thought, what's he going to do all winter? And then then it went to a little bit of finances more for insurance purposes because we had talked about him before Medicare. You retire, what, a year and a half before because then you can get COBRA up till 65. And so when he was going to retire that early, it's like, oh dear, now what? But Boeing's a great company and takes care of its people who retire. So yeah. that's helpful. Yeah. But yeah. My first thought was, he's oh going to be here all the time. He's going to be here all the time. Is that something you guys like talk through together or was that just something you kind of swallowed and no, he, he said, I don't think I can do this anymore from home right away, even in April. And I said, well, how, what time are you thinking? I'm thinking he's going to say six months or so. Oh no. In the next couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And it was what July something. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like, Oh, okay. Yeah. That's what you want to do. I mean, really, what can I say? He's been there that long. I know it was hard. Um, it was his decision as long as we had the other financial stuff figured out yeah. and we did, we've done well in our planning, so yeah. yeah, it was okay. I was, I was going to ask if, if you guys had concerns before retirement. So Terry, you shared one of just Ray being there all the time. Uh, but other, other concerns about that transition, a little bit of fines as in, and, and yeah, uh, not, not really. I mean, obviously we didn't have any grandchildren then. And so you, you do kind of wonder what you're going to do with your time. Um, Cause I thought about it too, at one point and I, I don't know what I'm going to do. And my mom and dad always said, oh, you find stuff to do. People say you find stuff to do in retirement. So I told him when he wanted to retire, I said, well, then I'm going to keep working <laughs> for a little while um, for, for several reasons. Yeah. But no, mm-hmm. I mean, it was, it was okay. Yeah. It, we talked about it. He didn't just do it one day and came home and said it, which <laughs> thank you. <for> that. <laughs> Yeah. Ray, what about you? Did you did you have concerns, especially since it was this accelerated timeline if you didn't maybe have a thoughtful plan, if I can say that, of like, all right, I've got a plan of when we get here, this is what it's going to look like. It was more of, okay, here we go. Oh, no. Or did you have any kind of preemptive, yeah, but what about this? Well, um, they, you know, the company was offering early retirement, but, but they're their plan for having you make your decision was, was short. I mean, down to like Terry said, weeks, you know, you had to make your decision and their plan was that this was going to be, you know, the last time they offer it, you know? And I said, well, you know, gosh, if if you're planning, if your plan is to go out in the next year, why wouldn't you try to take advantage of the six months? So, um, and I'd always heard that, you know, one of the things that you want to do is, you know, not only do you want to retire from a job, you really want to have a plan to retire to something else, you know, okay. to be doing something else. And so um, probably really didn't have, you know, much of a plan for that. Um, uh, but but like Terry said, you know, being home all the time, uh, COVID actually, you know, really kind of put the emphasis on that because with COVID you couldn't go any anywhere so so there was a lot of you know terry come home and there was a lot of uh, um watching the the game shows so a wheel a lot of wheel of fortune all right a lot of wheel a lot of jeopardy okay. you know because watching together all the sports were shut down <laughs> oh yeah. yeah and that's all we watched together that. is sports yeah <laughs> so yeah. that was all shut down yeah mariners oh. and everything else so um 
But, um, you know, the thing that uh, probably happened, you know, uh, we had belonged to the country club. And so they had made it possible that says, okay, because there's no exchanging of money in the whole thing, you can still go play golf. And so, so you just had to be cognizant of the bit of social distancing outside. And you got to remember that COVID was still kind of new. So, so they mm-hmm. still wanted you to distance. They took all the, any, anything that was on the course that multiple people would be handling at the time, you know, ergo, like, you know, the ball washing machines and some of that <laughs> stuff was gone. So, but then, then, you know, we learned, you know, everybody learned a little bit more about it and they opened it up a little bit. Ask him if he got yelled at for golfing. We did get yelled at a couple of times, only in that first week, (laughs) a couple of times, you know, people yelling out from the, on the golf course that we weren't supposed to be doing that. But then what were you doing? Just playing golf. Oh, well, it was people just, in their playing golf because everything else oh, was shut down. Everything was shut down. Okay. It's like people were, I don't, I don't want to use the word jealous, but it was like, <laughs> why can't they, why do they get to be out there golfing? Well, they're out in the open. He might've been golfing with his son mm-hmm. and people didn't like that. And they, they would get yelled at. Um, mm-hmm. Other people had stories too, that people in homes mm-hmm. would yell out, what are you doing? Yeah, we weren't, it wasn't oh, our yeah. finest hour yeah. you know, yeah. uh, as a people. Finest <laughs> year. <laughs> you, uh-huh. Even, uh, Terry, you might remember there was a video of some county somewhere where they were just opening up tennis courts again, and this local official was giving the rules of playing tennis, and you can you can have your tennis balls, but you can't touch somebody right. else's. Right. And you got to mark your like, tennis ball so you don't touch somebody else's. And it was just this <laughs> insane press conference. Did we tried that one time. Uh, we, we Each of us, uh, four of us, got out three tennis balls. We put our initials on it. And so after you played, and there's three of them over there, you had to make sure you didn't pick up the one, you picked up the one that had your initials on it. Yeah. it it's just strange. Yeah, mm. people were trying to make the best decisions yeah. they could. So, so Ray, uh, you retired from Boeing to Game shows and golf. <laughs> Pretty much. Is that what I heard? Yeah. Yep. Game shows and and then putting a lot more emphasis on, you know, uh, getting our house down in Arizona, too. Because yeah. we had been looking for before that for a while. But then now, you know, now there was time to be to, to do it. And there was, you know, resources to go make this thing happen, you know. And, you know, I... Uh, I had been looking for a while, and then in November, Terry was going to come down for a week, and I said, I told everybody, I said, this will all happen in a week now. (laughs) Sure enough, Mm -hmm. Terry came down, and by the Wednesday of the week, we had a house. Got a spot. (laughs) And it's a nice house, and we really like it, and uh, so. Is that something you were expecting in retirement, if we're going to get another spot? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We always talked about Phoenix, because uh, my sisters live there. My parents winter there from Chicago. We've got, I've got lots of cousins and stuff there. So, and friends, friends yep. have moved there. So we knew, even like you said, we probably been looking the last five, eight years. We just, too bad we didn't buy back then. Yeah. <laughs> but I wasn't on board with it yet. Knowing we, we were going to work and not be there very, you know, a couple of weeks in the winter. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but now with him retired. And then I thought he'll be down there when I'm not. <laughs> which I will be home alone again, <laughs> yeah. which was fine for a while. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then I think one of the things that, you know, the, the, if you say that there's is a benefit to COVID is that, you know, uh, the kids were all working from home. So it didn't say what home you had to work from. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, having the house down there, you know, Alyssa would come down and visit and, yeah. and stay there and work from there for a while. So, yeah. yeah. Were, were there things when retirement was this far away someday thing that you kind of had hopes of when I, when I retire, this is going to be part of my life or kind of the new me or the new us. Were, were there things, whether they've come to fruition or not, that you were expecting or hoping in retirement? Um, I, you know, I, I think a lot of the things have, you know, like Terry mentioned, you know, our, our goal was to have um, a place down in Arizona, um, you know, play a little golf, um, you know, be close to the family down there. What about pickleball? Are you a pickleballer? 
Um, I have not played that down there yet. All I right. probably could, but... Uh, You're going to be an outsider I, if you don't pick up a racket no, club. Ray and I don't play sports together. <laughs> well, that's, that's probably smart. It's better that way. That's why we've been married for 41 so years. Terry plays racket sports. Ray plays club sports. Mm-hmm. There you go. Okay. I quit Neither golfing so he could, because I beat him in golf, so I, I let him have golf. <laughs> wow. So <laughs> To preserve the marriage. You and, and then like I had Terry, to give up. You know, like Terry said, you know, I mean, um, you know... When all of this transpired, there were no grandkids, and now there are. And so, you know, that's another thing that came, you know, with uh, with retirement is, you know, you get to do whatever you want. And when people, you know, I'm finding that when people need you to babysit, say, yeah, let me clear my schedule. Oh, cool. that was easy. Done. <laughs> yeah. Done. Done. <laughs> Similar to Pastor Dan's question, uh, like, I don't know, at what age were you kind of thinking of retirement or what were your hopes for me as someone young, was there a time and point in life where you were like, Oh shoot, I actually need to plan this. (laughs) Or like, was there, was there like a light bulb or some point in life that that life event that was like, I should actually, I don't know, (laughs) figure out what retirement looks like. (laughs) Um, I, I think a couple things happen, you know, the, um, your kids get out of college um, you are at home more, you know, and then I think you start to see people around you are, are starting to, to retire and, mm. and then you're having conversations with them and, and then you come to the realization that says, um, gosh, maybe, maybe it's time to really start to put, you know, the, the makings of the plan together, you know, the, the, what are the elements now from today forward looking at that time frame that says, okay, we need to start looking at this and investigating this and, and then, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. having discussions with people about this and that and says, you know, okay, what are the things that we need to go do? So, and mm-hmm. like Terry said, you know, um, probably one of the biggest question marks a lot of people have is, you know, just healthcare. But again, you know, mm-hmm. Boeing takes really good care of it and, um, and we were fortunate there. So that was, that was good. So. And that, and those are things you guys planned together. Like you guys like sat down or did you just kind of like, ah, I'll, I got us taken care of or kind of. No, we had to it, plan. I mean, okay. he had it. You kind of had an advisor did you or through your, through mm-hmm. work that helped with retirement and, and that kind of money. And then mm-hmm. I was doing things with AAL or thriving oh, yeah. on the side and, um, doing my own things with some of my other clients, they would do retirement plans with me. So we, oh, okay. I think we were pretty smart about that. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a financial advisor that we work with our money, but mm-hmm. we didn't really have a planner like from the very beginning along the way. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't um, like you've graduated college, you got a job and it was like, all right, no. this is our trajectory. <laughs> no, but like, we did save. I mean, we were always, my parents were good about saving mm-hmm. and, you know, I try to teach my kids that so much out of your paycheck, try to just put in savings or if, if you're, if they have a matching at your um, place, then do that. Mm-hmm. Set a money aside and let your company match it, mm-hmm. which I don't even know if people, a lot of new companies don't do that anymore. I don't know. Right. So we, we were very blessed. Yeah. So Shane, the answer is yes, you should be saving for retirement. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes, you should be. Yep. <laughs> Compound interest, eighth wonder of the world. Eighth wonder <laughs> of the world. Yeah. <laughs> So, so what, no, I mean, it would, that's, that's what I would, um, yeah, mm-hmm. just start early, start putting it away. And one day you'll wake up and you'll just say, Hey, can I retire? And your financial guy says, yeah, I don't know why you're there. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, so we, we said one of the, I forgot the saying, but you'll find something to fill your calendar. You'll, 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 you'll you wonder what you'll do, but you'll find it. What other um, cliches or advice or warnings did you hear, whether they turned out to be true or not? Like what do you remember, you know, in your you know, mid fifties or as you kind of, that's on the horizon and all right, that's the thing someday. And you had peers and colleagues who'd gone through that. D- did people have kind of sayings or warnings or suggestions? Um, you know, I, not so much. I mean, I, and I think a lot of that is just probably just uh, based upon the fact that, you know, only having one job and one company working for that company and all of, the, you know, 
a lot of the people, everybody that you worked with were all the same in the same yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. Um, you really, you really didn't, but, um, no, it's just, uh, you know, just, you know, probably the big thing, you know, they'll saving for the rainy day, you know, and, and, and like Terry said, you know, we were always good savers and, yeah. and, um, kind of blessed with the, you know, a market that was doing well at a lot of different times and through the tough times and, and the such, you know, but, um, no, not so much, right. uh, just, um, but, but just knowing that, that the day would come at some point in time, you know, um, look forward to things. Uh, but, do you, do but, you know but, what day of the week it is mostly? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> if golf is on TV, it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. If mm -hmm. not. So you've got to narrow down to a three or four day. Minutes. I'm you, sorry. You know, garbage day. And garbage day. Mm -hmm. Well, and then there used to be, you know, uh, clean the clean alcohol floor day too. Yeah. That, Ray that was our Zamboni driver here at, this, at the church. He uh, was <laughs> the Zamboni, Zamboni driver in the gym. It, it is kind of funny though, because you can get lost. And, and I played golf with two guys yesterday, one who just retired in the last couple months and one had been retired. And we, we do joke about the fact that uh, um, you can lose track of the day of the week, but it's really easy to lose track of what day, like <laughs> what the number? day of the month it is. Yeah. Like if you're writing a check. Mm -hmm. Who, who, I don't who know. Chain checks. checks. <laughs> plays a piece of checks or piece of paper that somehow are vouchers for money. I don't oh, know is how that, that works. What that was? <laughs> yeah. Or the fact that you've got a sister whose birthday's coming up on July first, and you think, oh, <laughs> and you realize, oh my Next god, oh my gosh, that's only a week away. <laughs> yeah, my little brother's birthday's tomorrow, and also snuck up on me. So happy exactly. birthday, Chris! This is coming out after your birthday. <laughs> Love you, and it's in the mail probably. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so, so Terry, do you look, do you, is retire? well, seeing like Ray in retirement, is that something you're looking at like, oh, I can't wait, or like, oh, I hope, like, I'm glad I have something to fill my days, like planned out, or is this? It's kind of mixed, because okay. I, I don't know what I would do all day home alone. I mean, not alone, but just home, home all day. Mm -hmm. Sometimes on a Saturday, it's like, what am I going to do today? I don't know. Bored. Go for a walk. Play tennis. Do... But I, everybody says you always find ways to fill your time. Mm -hmm. And now that we do have grandchildren, um, that hopefully as they get older and we, you know, have to watch them more because they don't have to be so reliable on their parents, um, that will fill my time. Yeah. But sometimes Ray will say, well, when we go down to the desert for six months, I'm like, I'm not going anywhere for six months, even if I'm retired, because my grandkids are here and I'm not going to not see them for six months. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I like what I do. Yeah. I have, I've been whittling down all my clients, but I still have three other clients besides St. Luke's, which hmm. keeps me at a 35 to 40 hour work week. Oh, wow. But I enjoy it. I could do it whenever I want. You know, mm -hmm. even Pastor Dan has said, if I don't come in, we've got the VPN, I can work from home. Um, and I like all the people I work with. So to me, it's not a burden and I enjoy it. And I haven't really looked at retirement. I mean, in the next few years. Yeah. But yeah, you're not, not tomorrow till death. You'll be, yeah. <laughs> that's what'll happen. I'll retire and I'll die the next day. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I think, I think it is hard for a lot of people. I mean, I, I, I this is years away from me, but as a pastor, I get to interact with a lot of people, a lot of different life stages. And, and I've heard in a, many times over how hard retirement can be. Um, I think my understanding is that some of that is because people, their, their worth and their identity is maybe so tied up in what they do, which is even how we introduce ourselves. Like, hi, you know, who are you? What do you do? As if like, that's what defines you. And then when that's not there, who am I? And then, um, maybe the sense of purpose, whereas to get up and go do your job, it, that's fulfilling. I, I help design that wing, by the way, I, is it, are there two wings on a plane or is it one big wing? I, I heard you say wing singular earlier. <laughs> so then it made me question everything. I think I know. Well, we we kind of call, you know, a left hand wing and a center wing or a left hand and a right hand. And then there's actually a center wing in the okay. middle that kind of right. keeps them all together. All right. But, and, but and to have a purpose, but to have a purpose to say, yeah. I'm, I'm contributing to this. And then I think some people transition out of work into retirement and they, 
maybe they don't have grandkids, they don't have the goal of a, a house, or they don't already have a community and a hobby in place, and then all of a sudden it's, mm-hmm. now what? That, that that sounds really scary. Yeah. Yeah. Well, again, you know, um, having the house down in Arizona, one of the good things about it was, like Terry said, is that, you know, we have so much family down there. So I, I got to start to interact with family that we normally would only see, you know, occasionally during the, during the, uh, the year, you know, maybe Christmas, a trip down there, maybe they'll come up to see us, you know, whatever. So now it was, you know, hop in the car and, and, uh, you know, go out and have lunch with, uh, with one of Terry's sisters or, you know, go help Terry's mom and dad do something, you know, maybe. Well, and your family came down. They wouldn't have come here maybe in March, but they'll go down to Sun City. So we had his sister and, and our nephew come down. I w- went down there then that time. Mm-hmm. So it's nice. Yeah. You have a place to go where other people from Illinois who are tired of the winter <laughs> can then come. Yeah. So that was nice. Yep. And then, yeah, like I said, Alyssa comes down. She was coming down pretty daughter. often. In that. Yeah. Daughter, yep. But, um, but no, you're right. I mean... You know, having my sister out, we we got to do some things that we probably would not have done. Got Terry up in a hot air balloon. Ooh, that was it hard? I, I like that. Are you scared of heights? No, that and parasailing, I love. Oh, okay. I've done that once, and I loved it. Yeah, I remember uh, we were sitting out at the, the the restaurant that Terry's sister works at, and we were out back having dinner and. And my sister was making plans for coming out, and I took a snapshot, took a phone picture mm-hmm. of all these hot air balloons touching down out there. I said, want to take a hot air balloon? She goes, no. Uh. <laughs> About two weeks later, she, she sent me a text back. She goes, I've decided that if I don't do it now, I may never do it. Mm. <laughs> so, so we went That's and did fun. it. It was so much fun. I though. don't see a lot of those cool. out here in Missouri. We had every mm. all summer long. That was a normal thing out here. You'll mm-hmm. see them more up in Woodenville, you know, yeah. up, up north a little bit more. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a You'll good point because we, we were the, at San Michelle that night, mm-hmm. and you know, here we're watching this. the Chicago, <laughs> yeah. and comes, you know. there's these hot air balloons lifting up behind it. It was like, oh my gosh, is this really happening? This is like the most awesome. I'm listening to the band Chicago play my favorite. I thought songs. you meant the, the, the baseball team, but no, 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 no. <laughs> and uh, and then these hot air balloons were like coming. It was just like mm. it was so cool. Yeah. That's awesome. I, I've got so many questions. Gosh, I don't know how much time we have left. Um, all the time you all, all the time we need. All right. Who cares if everybody's still listening? By the way, if you're still listening, <laughs> thanks for being part of the conversation. We're having fun. And uh, that's all that really matters to me right now. Um, I, I, kind of for both of you, I'll start with Terry, though. Terry, what, uh, what do you wish Ray would have done differently? Or what would you think he should, if he got to do this again, what should he do the same? Retire? Yeah, in retirement, in that transition from full time worker to now I'm a, a retiree. What what did he do right, and what would you like? You know, if he could do this again, maybe, maybe we do this differently. I don't know. Like I said, if it wasn't COVID, he'd still he would have been still working. But I don't I don't really have anything that he would do differently. I don't know. I can answer that question. Yeah, I'm curious, right? I just want to give give her a chance. You can speak for her or yourself. I wish before Ray retired, he took cooking lessons so that dinner was ready when I got home. And and that's one of the things I wish I, I, you know, you you know how every guy has like two meals that he's probably could, could really do, you know, and I, I wish that I, I really wish that I was as creative, like, like, like our son, Eric, yeah. you know, to be able just to cook things. And I would, you know, I would love to be able to say that, you know, oh yeah, you know, here's dinner, hon, you know, but, but I am just not gifted in that thing. And maybe it's a learned thing. Maybe I can do it, but there's <laughs> classes. But that, but, that uh, did happen the first few weeks that he, that he was, tried or well, you expected him to. I, ex- <laughs> I pretty much had dinner on the table, whether I worked or not when he came home or we were going to go out that night or sometimes I'd, he'd come home and say, what's for dinner? I don't know. I, what do you want? I, I don't know. I worked all day. Well, the first couple of weeks I came home, I'm like, oh, good dinner's on the table. And it really wasn't. <laughs> I'd say, oh, thanks for cooking dinner. Oh, you know, tonight. And it never happened unless it was in the summer. You did last summer cook out a lot. And so he'd have 
but yeah, that's not his gift and that's okay. <laughs> and, and, and again, if it's a learned thing, I, I'd like to learn it, but, but the, you know, I see that as something that, that I would like to be able to do. And the best part about retirement is, is that, you know, you have time to go learn that kind of stuff, you know, cause, cause one of the things I found with retirement is nothing needs to get done today hmm. it, because it can get done tomorrow. When you were working, you had two days that everything had to get done. You had to mow uh-huh. the yard and da, 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 da. Mm. And that was Saturday and Sunday. And now it's like, you know, eh, um, yeah, if it, if it doesn't need to get, if, if somebody calls and they need babysitting or somebody calls and says, can you put up signs at the church? <laughs> it, whatever I was doing, can you come in and record a podcast in an hour? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Whatever I was doing, will still get done. I, matter of fact, you know, the, I can tell you right now in the backyard, the, the shears are probably still sitting in the lawn, you know, because, <laughs> because it'll get done tomorrow, you know, and that sounds really freeing. It, By the way, there is a uh, member of our congregation. Her name is Beth, who happens to have also retired from Boeing in the not too distant past, who has given cooking lessons to my daughter. Mm. And uh, we drop Alexis over at Miss Beth's once a week for a couple hours and she'd learn a new recipe. She got a spiral bound book and every week added a new recipe to it. So, uh, Sounds like an Sign opportunity. Him up. So I, I, <laughs> I would so do it. Terry, I mean, make the I call. Would. We we can we can hook this up. Because I know that I know how much of a, a an impact you know I could I could do that. Yeah. You know, and it's something I would love to be able to do. Like I said, our son Eric, he What's can ever in the he could take that piece of paper right there <laughs> in front of me, and he could make a dish out of it that you'd want to have That's every awesome. week. I'll never forget yeah. one. Th- I think it was Thanksgiving or Christmas, and it wasn't too long ago. He's like, I think I could do all this, but I can't have it already at the same time when it's hot. And mm. he goes, that amazes me how you and help with other people in the room are getting it all together at the same time. Oh. <laughs> but I, I could see that being a potential stress in, in, in a dynamic where one person's retired and the other isn't, that there is an expectation of, oh, now the laundry will be folded or the house will be clean. There or, is no expectation anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I can see that being like a, a potential <laughs> argument of a, an assumption that now that you're at home, not doing anything, you know, uh, an unstated expectation that certain things would get done or done better or done differently. And, um, the dishwasher emptied yeah. <laughs> my, my, my neighbor in Omaha, he wasn't retired yet, but their kids were all grown up and he was out edging one day and making the sidewalk look really great. And I was like, Mike, just so you know, it's not going to happen. Like on this side of like, the, the line where the property, like it's, it's not going to happen. And I was like, if that's a problem for you, like, I don't think we were going to be friends anyway. And, <laughs> but he was like, you got kids, like do your yeah. thing. And, yeah. um, and so, yeah, right now we live next to our next door neighbor, John, he's great. And, but beautiful lawn he's out there you know he could be on his knees trimming it by hand and <laughs> like you know what if if we get to it this month we get to it and by we it's probably charlotte so um the thing is i think we're both independent too you know so we i think since the kids have left in college and some of them came back but we've all we've both done our own laundry he doesn't do mine i don't do his yeah. It, yeah. and now that he's home he can do it during the day and i'll do it at night whatever but um my dad was always like that with my mom, and I appreciate that about him because if dinner's not on the table, then we figure it out. You know, nobody's mad. We don't have to do every single thing together. That came know. across very clear to yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> that's great. And I think that's why it works. <laughs> yeah. And I think that comes from some of our uh, interests that lie outside of everything we do, you know, like tennis and the theater with Terry and, and everything. And, and, Golf is a different day sometimes, you know, and so, yeah, so you come home and, and, uh, you know, oh yeah, it's Thursday. That's tennis at the bowling club, you know, so you got to take care of yourself. And, and then when we do come together, you know, it's like, oh, well, well let's go someplace. It's the Mariner games because yeah. he was, a mm-hmm. he, when he worked at Boeing, there was like, I don't know, seven, eight people and they kind of went in together. Yeah. And, uh, so we went to seven, eight games a year. And so I miss that because that's something we did together. And yeah. sometimes you'd take Andy or I'd take Alyssa, but it was something we did together. And so we're not doing that anymore. Mm-hmm. So got to just take, buy tickets and go or go to the Rainier game. It's nice and close. Yeah. So we've got all kinds of, well, I, we've got potentially no one listening to this conversation right now. <laughs> and that's okay. If you're listening, by the way, thanks. You're awesome. Um, but potentially we have a lot of different people, different life stages listening. So there might be people who've, 
been retired for 40 years and they're reminiscing going, Oh yeah, that was that my, my grandpa, by the way, he, he just shared with me that he's been not working longer than he's been working mm. at this point in his life. He took an early retirement and it's just so mm. interesting little turning point of he's been not working more than he's worked. Um, so we've got people like that. We've got other people who are, you know, a few years into retirement and they're nodding or going, that was not my experience. We've got other people who are maybe getting closer to that. And this is very real, but we've also got Shane who's got 75 more years of work <laughs> yep. um, in order to possibly have a, a chance at retirement. Um, so all that being said, I, I uh, one least potentially last question from me is having experienced retirement for a little bit now, still new. I mean, mm -hmm. you're, you're kind of a novice at this. So Ray's not an expert by any means. Um, <laughs> And, and Terry's not even there yet, but she's been a firsthand witness for a little bit. Now that you've experienced this stage of life for a little bit, are there things that, and I don't want to make it sound like a regret, but are there things that you wish you had put in the place earlier? I, I heard you say cooking is just a ex somewhat silly example of it would have been nice to have cooking lessons. But, and, and I've also heard you say um, you had a number of hobbies, interests, people groups, whether children or coworkers that you do life together with, that you maybe have more freedom to do that now. And that it's probably important that you had those in place instead of trying to create them from scratch now. But are there things that you're in this stage now going, you know what? I, I, I wish I had done something different before, um, either to prepare for this or, Oh, I could have been doing this all along. Um, or maybe it's just a thankful, I'm really thankful I had this in place getting to this point. But as you look back, if, if somebody's in their 40s or 50s or 30s, are there things that would be helpful for them to put in their life now besides saving that would make that, you know, whatever, final, second, whatever you describe it, after retirement, that, that part of yeah. their life more fulfilling if, if certain things were in place already? It's kind of a big question. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I think it, for me, it's just, um, you know, we'll talk about, you know, pre-retirement, post-retirement. And, and I, I think I think some of the things that you just do in pre-retirement for all of those years, whether it's work or whether it's home or whether it's, you know, kids' activities or, you know, spousal activities, there are things that you do. You just, you do them. You, you you, you mow the yard, you have projects, you, you interact with people. There's all these, all these experiences that you, you just do all the time. It's just, it's, it's what you do in life in that pre-retirement mode. And out of that, um, I think what you've done is, is you've, you've gained a lot of skills that you do, whether they're skills that, that with your hands or with your, you know, the, the, the knowledge that you've gained from something, um, the people that you've met and the relationships that you, you, you grow there. Um, there are things that you learn and you develop and, 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 uh, along the lines, you know, you, you gain certain things like for me, you know, there's, there's a lot of, um, uh, a lot of projects at home and things like that, that I've, you know, have a lot of tools. <laughs> and literally, you know, <laughs> tools, real tools. And so, so the, so that's, that's an example of them post act post retirement is, is kind of like, you know, you've said, okay, um, uh, you're not going to be doing that in this sequence of events, you're going to be doing something different, but you take all of those skills that you've developed and now you have a whole different timeline of how you go and implement those skills and that knowledge that you've gained um, to help other people. Um, you know, just, you have time on your hands. And again, uh, I go back to the comment that says, nothing needs to get done today, unless Terry says so. Nothing <laughs> needs to get done today because I'll be here tomorrow. So when somebody says, so, so here's a good example, you know, You've helped raise your kids for a number of years. Well, then somebody calls and says, hey, can you babysit? Of course I can do that. <laughs> you know, you can literally almost at any point in time drop what you're doing today 
and take that skill that you have that you developed for all those years and go do it. You know, um, you know, um, you know, the one skill that seems like it's, it's popping up all the time right now is, you know, painting, painting Mm -hmm. inside the house (laughs) happens to be a lot of that. Am I, you know, you can say, Hey, and you say, yes. And I have this, big box and I'll bring my big box with me because I have all of these, you know, painting tools that we can use. And then I have this, you've developed, although it maybe not be, you know, top tier skill of painting. I can, I can put paint on a wall and have it look okay when we're done. And so you can do that. So you can say that this point in time in my life with retirement, um, it's just a whole different schedule. It's not like, It's not like when they ask you pre-retirement, hey, can you help this? And you're like, "Uh, yeah, uh, let's do it Saturday morning because Saturday afternoon I've got to mow the yard or whatever. It's Mm -hmm. like, yeah, Mm -hmm. we can do that, you know, and and I've got everything we need. And and as a matter of fact, you know, you just show me what you want to get done and tell me how you want to do it. And, and, you know, chances are I'll have it done before you get home from your work because you're inside of this. Or people call in that. And, and that's probably the, the thing with retirement that you say, would you done it? I'd say, you've gained a lot of skills. You've gained a lot of assets. You know, now you put those to use with other people. And, and that's, a, that's a really great thing to be able to do. Um, and that's the one thing I see in retirement that um, I'm able to go help and do things for other people because I have time. And then I can take and utilize some of that skill and some of those traits and some of those tools to help people that, that don't have that time right now. Yeah. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. One of the things I heard, there's just a lot of continuity actually between pre retirement, post retirement. The, one of the, the, the probably biggest differences for you is the time, the flexibility, the freedom, um, the, the more availability and yet a, a continuity of the people or the relationships rather than seeing this as something completely different you're still a Ray, you still have all your skills and learnings and networks, and now you just have a lot more freedom to mm-hmm. um, love and serve others even. Yeah. Yep. It's really cool. Shane, mm-hmm. one of our goals for the podcast here is not just to have this conversation, but to have conversations out of this. Yeah. Um, so uh, as, as we wrap up here, I'm curious what... What's your, uh, what are your conversations that come out of this? Whether you corner Ray in the lobby after church on a Sunday, whether you go home and talk to Lauren or call a financial advisor or start a new hobby. Um, what, what's the, what does it look like for you to continue this conversation? It's definitely talk with Lauren. <laughs> talk with my wife. About what? What, what, what do you, what do you bring up from today's just conversation? About, just about the kind of far future planning for it. Um, that's something Lauren and I th- are getting need to get better at is just like long-term planning planning more than just the year because i'm like this is my first full-time job ever we're just trying to figure out like vacations like took a vacation this last week like that took so much planning effort like like let alone like retirement gotta fill up paperwork yeah (laughs) gotta fill up paperwork take the time off but like buy the planes no one's telling me to do it it's like this is all just stuff i gotta or we gotta do on your own. It's, it's not like I'm going to get an email that's like, or like someone, someone is, is making me do this. It's there's like, no syllabus yeah, for the rest of no your syllabus. life. Yeah. That, yeah. There, there's not. And so taking time, intentional time with uh, Lauren to like figure out what we're doing. Like, do we know what we're doing? I don't know. We don't, but let's try to figure something out or get some idea of what we're doing. <laughs> That's that's definitely biggest takeaway for me and like coming out of this. And that's something that like to like I'm I'm not I am not familiar at all like in the world of retirement. Like my parents are 60 something I don't know. They 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 they, they try to hide it. I don't know. There's 60 something, I think. 50 so nine, old. I don't so know. Old. Something. I don't know. But they're like I don't know if like they they don't talk about their retirement other than like they would like to but they got to work some still and and whatnot but so but they don't talk about the kids at all or and so 
a lot of, of learning for me. <laughs> out of today's conversation here, is there yeah. anything that you think would be interesting to talk with your mom or dad about or for them to say, hey, mom or dad, I just talked with some people. You guys should talk about this or any, anything you're curious. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I, I need to. It would be good for me to just call them or just ask them, like, what are you guys doing? What can we do differently or the same as you and kind of learn from them? see what what's a good idea or what's not yeah cool probably more so for lauren's parents i think they're better fin- like planning financially <laughs> than my not a competition <laughs> <laughs> also your parents might be listening so they probably are that's, that's it's all I'm... in good faith <laughs> no. yeah cool uh ray terry thank you thank thanks you. for mm-hmm. taking time i it sounds like you've got plenty of it uh if um if you're in the federal area and you need something painted, uh, <laughs> just give me a call here at St. Luke's and uh, Ray's. He, he drives a mean Zamboni and can throw paint on a wall. Uh, but really, thanks, thanks for taking time. This is I've known you guys for a while. This is this is great just to hear, uh, really kind of dig into this area of life. Um, Terry, it's on the horizon. Shane, you're never going to get there. Um, so just <laughs> get back to work. And uh, <laughs> those of you listening or watching, thanks for taking time. If there's a way that we can walk with you or keep the conversation going, send us a line, leave us a comment, give us a rating. Um, but but really, our goal in putting this out is just to help people connect with one another. So whether that means you're serving and doing irrigation at your neighbor's house, or you're just calling your dad and asking about his journey of retirement, um, or having a new conversation with your spouse, or something to talk about instead of making fun of your buddy's drive. We just want to have real conversations about things that matter. So um, thanks. Thanks for tuning in. You're welcome. Thank you. Yay. That's the end of the episode, but we want to continue the conversation. Continue the conversation by sharing this episode, subscribing, or leaving a review. Connect with us on Instagram at 2414podcast. Connect with us through email at 2414 at stlukes-church.com. Or best of all, keep the conversation going by inviting someone to process with you so that you can each walk away with more understanding that leads to more conversation as the journey continues. If you happen to be in the Seattle-Tacoma area of Washington, stop by on a Sunday morning and say hi. 2414 is a podcast produced by St. Luke's Lutheran Church in Federal Way, Washington. To find more content, discover upcoming opportunities to connect in person, or to support the show, head on over to stlukes-church.com. Thanks for walking with us.